Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Wolf Roundtable here on ASU TV. I'm Tristan Harlan here with my day younger best friend Cooper yes. Melder. If you guys didn't know we turned 21 over the weekend so we're in for some fun times. But Cooper yes. what a great show we got for the ladies and gentlemen today. Oh I mean it's always a great show when you're watching Red Wolf Roundtable here on ASU TV and you know I think James may have some breaking news today. Breaking news? No way. James what you got on your plate today my brother? I sure do, guys. So this just in, our Arkansas State men's golf team has won the Bubba Barnett Intercollegiate for the eighth consecutive season. So congratulations to those guys. So we're going to move on to some A-State volleyball. On September 23rd, the Red Wolves beat the soaring Georgia Southern Eagles, who came into town, but they cut off the Eagles' momentum, beating them in the fourth set 3-1. to one. This came after a loss the night before. Fast uh, to Friday, a-State fell to the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana at home. The score of that match, 0-3. to three. Then the Cajuns kept their boost of motivation Saturday. The Red Wolves would lose again in a fourth set contest, this time by a score of 1-3. to A-State will return to action on Friday and Saturday, traveling to South Alabama. The first serve is at 6 p.m. on Friday and 1 p.m. on Saturday. You can watch those matches on ESPN Plus or on EAB Sports Radio Network. So, A State now 11 and 5, 1 and 3 in conference play. Um, Tristan and Cooper, I have a question for you guys. So, are you really concerned how the Red Wolves have been playing here early in this Sun Belt conference season? Well, I mean, James, I mean, you bring up a good point. Are we, should we be worried? Should we be concerned? Well, the fact of the matter is this. Coach Gerwig, he, he has his game plan installed with this team on how they want to rally, you know, whether they play in the three sets or maybe even five sets. But the, the problem lies is when you get to that fourth, maybe third set of rallies from the opposing team, it just seems like the team is tired and they don't necessarily have that – extra boost of motivation to keep the ball on the other side. I mean, you, you guys seen it last weekend against Louisiana. It was kind of this idea that maybe Arkansas State should have won at least on Friday, but mm -hmm. they got swept, and then they come Saturday, they lost 3-1. to one. But my biggest concern for this volleyball team is, is not can they win games, but can they keep the momentum going when they have something going? Because I bring, I want to bring up this great point. Saturday, Arkansas State had a very surmountable lead on Louisiana, which they ended up choking in the first set. Now, yes, you hate hearing the word choke a lead, but <laughs> when it comes down to it, you can't allow the opposing team to come back from a 20 to 6 deficit, or if not more, maybe even just a tad bit less. But Cooper, what do you think about the volleyball team? You know, it brings up a good thought. Does, should we be concerned? And I say we should. This team struggled a lot last year. And the beginning of this year, they really went on that winning streak. And they haven't you haven't seen them lose back to back just like they did. So my concern is, are they able are they going to be able to bounce back? Because this team last year, when they got on a losing streak, it felt like they couldn't get off of it. Therefore, we just did terrible in conference. But we they know how to win. They've proven that. It's just the matter of fact, you just got to finish it out. That's all they have to do. If they can just start finishing sets out, we'll be A-OK. -okay. And I really think Coach Gerwick, he has the talent. He's been in this position before. And I feel like he'll be able to lead us on to the winning ways. Right, Cooper. And James, I kind of want to throw another question back at you because, you know, last week, guys, we actually gave our kind of pick -ems predictions for the UMass game. And James, you were actually the one that was closest to the actual score. I don't know if it's some magical powers on the bald head because I got hair, I can't do it. But your bald head is currently 3-0 and in predictions. So what did, you, what did you think about the UMass game? And how did you get a prediction so close to right on the money? I mean – the guys have really been gelling together and they have really adapted to Jalen Rayner as their quarterback. Like when, like I said, I figured it was going to be a very high scoring game last on last week c compared to we, the game we played at here at home. So I was saying, why not just go for another high scoring game? Look at J the man had six touchdowns in a 383 yard passing game. So like, it's Jalen Rayner is the key. I mean, I don't know what else, how else to say it. Like, it's Jalen Rayner. And if you don't remember James's prediction, he predicted a score of 50 to 28. And the final, no, 50 to 20. The final score was 52 to 28. So, James, 
later on in this episode, you better be giving us a good A-State win is all I got to say. Yeah, gotcha. and James, real quick, before we kind of, you know, kind of move on to other things, I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, how the offense produced against UMass. I mean, I, mean, I know UMass isn't the greatest team in the world, but we were able to see guys like Adam Jones and Jeff Foreman really get open and get into the end zone and have a lot of yards. So what did you think about that? Once again, like execution, like they're buying in. It's not – they're buying in to Coach Butch and they believe in Jalen Rayner. Not saying that they didn't believe in Shroud or, um, or Jackson. It's just they have bought in to his style of play. He can get out the pocket. He can throw the ball. So he's, he's mobile. So, I mean, just so – look at Jeff – look at John, Adam Jones. Three receptions, 105 yards, a touchdown. Courtney Jackson, 75 yards. Like – these guys, they want to get open, and they, he knows where to find them. So that has been the key for them on this receiving side of the football. Right, and, you know, you brought up Courtney Jackson and kind of the rest of the receiving core, but Cooper, I kind of want to steer it to you real quick before we do send it to break where we kind of go more into depth. Just mm -hmm. looking on the surface level of things, you know, after James's prediction and after seeing that game against UMass, you know, we heard Mr. Stoltz call it a fantastic game. Yes. That was most – that was awesome to listen to. Kudos to Mr. Matt Stoltz. But, you know, just on the surface level of things, what do you think the Arkansas State Red Wolves did right? What they did right was they started off hot. They scored quick early. They got a big lead early. At the end of the first quarter, they were already up 17 nothing. I don't think I've seen a game in my time here at Arkansas State that they've gotten up early. It's feel like that first quarter, they kind of, you know, they're slow to start. They came out quick. I mean, we saw them march right down field, score, get a quick three and out. Next thing you know, we're up 14 nothing, just like that. And that being said, getting up 17 nothing early in a game can help you big time because, yeah, UMass came back in the second quarter and scored 10, but we matched that with a 14. So going into halftime, we're up 31 to 10, and that it's basically over because our offense, we can score and score and score. And we don't have to rely too much on our defense. We kind of saw that at the end of the game. Every time UMass went and scored, we would match that. So if we can have quick starts like we did against UMass, it will help us throughout the Sunbelt Conference play. Right. And, James, I kind of want to steer back to you real quick. You know, again, I just want to thank you for coming on and being a part of this show this year. But – I gotta ask, I, and I just have to ask, is there some sort of special ritual you do for that beautiful bald head of yours to be so smart <laughs> and so winning when it comes to these predictions? No, man, I'm, it's really just belief and really just analyzing the game because this Red Wolves team, as we started off 0-2, and comes really just feeding off of you guys. As you guys said, like, it really just took them to bind into Coach Butch's scheme and his game plan for not just the upcoming games, but for this season and really just gelling together. He has made the changes and the guys have really just bought in on the defensive and offensive side of the ball and it's finally showing. And I'm excited to see where the rest of the season is going. Well, James, again, thank you so much for this first analysis of a segment. We're going to come back to you a little bit later talking about the Troy game. But, Cooper, you know, real quick, what do you think is going to become of Jalen Rayner? I just hope he does really good, but not too good that other schools are wanting him. You, Rayner, you got to stay here. A-State's home. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not going to let him go. Right, right. Well, I, don't, I hate to cut you off, but, guys, when we come back to here on Red Wolf Roundtable, we're going to recap UMass a little bit more and talk about Jalen Rayner's performance is it worth being hype about, or is it just one of those things where, eh, you played UMass? But, guys, when we come back, we're going to go deep into this discussion. So stick around. We'll be right back after this. ASU TV, covering all your favorite sports. From Red Wolf Roundtable to Westside Football and more, ASU TV has you covered. Tune in now to ASU TV for news and coverage on these sports and more.
Welcome back to Red Wolf Roundtable here on HGTV. And guys, like we mentioned before we go to break, it's now time to dive in more to the UMass win. And Cooper, I want to kind of go back to what you were saying before we went to break when you and James were kind of bouncing back and forth off each other. Where do you, what do you think went well on the offensive side, the defensive side? I know you kind of said a little bit, but I want you to kind of dive in okay. more to it. Well, if you're just looking at the stats for this game here, Arkansas State once again had almost 200 rushing yards. And yes, the passing, it's our bread and butter, but we've seen the past three games that we've had success and and won on this three game win streak. We have had really good rushing yards. And when you have a three headed monster with Zach Wallace, Jaquez Cross, and our quarterback Jalen Rayner, I mean, what else what else is there to say? And we had zero turnovers. You're going to win a lot of games when you're not forcing turnovers. Right, and you brought up a good point. But I want to talk about this, too. The fact that the defense was able to get these turnovers yes. in this game. Now, like we said, it was UMass. We didn't ex – I mean, we didn't expect They were to be, a favorite. They were a favorite, but you didn't want to get too crazy about it because, again, this next week you're going to play Troy, which we'll get into later. But just looking at it a little bit more, when it comes down to the running back sort of deal – you have Zach Wallace and just Jaquez Cross. You know, we talked about Jalen Rayner and how his ability to be mobile is very fantastic. But the thing I want to bring up is, is Jaquez Cross, the Purdue transfer, he has kind of lit a fire in this offense, the one we haven't seen before. I mean, yeah, last season we had Johnny Lang, who is more of a special teams kind of back. But now that we have a true blue running back in Jaquez Cross for Fort Ice, Arkansas, home of Bear Bryant, we really are able to see now a true running game to where you don't have to just rely on the deep ball, which it seems to be Jalen Rayner's favorite sort of thing to run in that offense is where he fakes that handoff and he's throwing it 50 to 60 yards for that deep ball to Jeff Foreman, Corey Rucker, or Courtney Jackson. But, you know, moving on to Zach Wallace, and he's kind of that big third down mm -hmm. back that you like to see in on these different teams. You know, when it's third and two, you put him in there. I mean, he's a big body. Yes. He's a big muscular body, so he's able to punch it through that hole and really get that first down. But kind of moving back to Jalen Rayner a little bit and sign of circumstancing this is, I want to ask you this. Okay. Is his performance against UMass worth being that hype about? I mean, we, you've seen people talk about it. Everybody that covers the Arkansas State Red Bulls on Twitter, they think of this game as Jalen Jalen Rayner's best game of the, of the season. And he actually won Offensive Player of the Week in the Sun Belt for his performance against UMass. But, Cooper, I want to ask you this, and, James, if you want to pipe in, you can. Is this performance against UMass worth being this excited over? I do, because if you look at the stats, he had a QBR of 93.4. He had 383 passing yards and six passing touchdowns. Six passing touchdowns ties the state record of most in a game. So, in a stat we don't on, have on there, he only had five incompletions. So, yes, it was against a weaker team in UMass, but I just put it this way. If you look at Caleb Williams, he won the Heisman. First game of the year, they played um, San Jose State. He threw seven incompletions and had only four touchdowns. So, I think if you're going to beat up on a bad team, I mean, he did it perfectly only five incompletions so I personally think so because six touchdowns in one game with no interceptions is quite frankly not talked about right and James I kind of want to get your opinion on it too if you're able to kind of break this down for us a little bit from your perspective I know you're a big Rainer fan and you're kind of you're kind of high on that mountain with Jalen Rainer but just looking at it from your standpoint too what do you think of this performance and is it worth getting this hype over it's definitely worth getting hype over because you, first off, like Coop said, the player of the week over Heisman winner Caleb Williams at USC. Like, we're at Arkansas State. Like, Arkansas State, USC, that's a – I mean, we're not as big as them, but, hey, this guy showed he is definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with over the next couple of years here in the Sun Belt. And – that was my big takeaway, it just as Coop said. Five incompletions, six touchdowns, no interceptions. You did not turn the ball over. You had, you ran for 39 yards, 10 attempts, and, like, you just were the force. You were the motor force for this offense as he has continued to be ever since he has been named the starting quarterback. And 
yes, he is definitely the truth. <laughs> okay, he is okay. the truth. Okay, so you so you're calling him the truth. We're giving him the nick. That that is his new official nickname here Paul on Rainbow Round Table. Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce mentioned we're gonna call Jalen Rayner from here on out the truth. <laughs> now here's here's where I come in on this. Now I'm probably gonna be the one guy that's gonna get Debbie crucified. Downer. You're Debbie right. Downer. Here we go. <laughs> but here's the thing, okay? And, and I hate to say this because I, I love this football team. I love how successful they're being so far. But it was against UMass. I get they were a favorite coming in. But here's my here's my two cents worth of opinion on this. When you're playing a game against a weaker opponent like UMass, this is a game everybody knew we were going to win. Now, did we think it was going to be closer? Sure. But when you have an opponent like UMass where you barely won last year and you won convincingly this year, I just don't agree with the hype. Now, don't get me wrong. What he's been able to accomplish in his start so far as quarterback one for Arkansas State is tremendous. It is undeniably great. But here is the thing that I want to put into perspective. The last time we saw a quarterback kind of do something like this was Lane Hatcher in 2020. And let's be frank here. Lane Hatcher's time at Arkansas State sucked, and that's why he transferred. So you're going back to Lane – you're not Lane, not Lane Hatcher, but you're going back to Jalen Rayner for a little bit, and you're thinking, okay, this is this the guy is the quarterback that we've needed for the past three seasons where he can run the ball, he can throw the ball deep down the field, and he can find open receivers and when, he's, when he's moving in the pocket like, you know, a Caleb Williams does. But here's my thing. Unless he does this against Troy, who is coming into this game as the defending Sunbelt Conference champion, I don't necessarily am on the hype train yet. This isn't a disrespectful thing, and it, it is, it's not me saying I'm not a fan of Jalen Rayner because I am. I knew when he announced that he was coming to Arkansas State that it was going to be a big-time move for the Red Bulls. But my thing is, and you guys can kind of come back at me on this, Coop. I know you're chomping out the bit waiting yes. to crucify me. <laughs> my thing is, is until Jalen Rayner proves that he can do this against big Sunbelt opponents like a Coastal, like a Troy, like a South Howell, even, a, even if James Madison, if we, when we play them in the next couple of years when he's still on the team, I'm not going to believe Jalen Rayner is him until I see that happen. Now, again, I am a Jalen Rayner fan. I hope he does good things at Arkansas State. But right now, I just am not on the hype train. And I'm going to counter that with James Blackman, okay. our quarterback, had 17 touchdowns all of last year. Okay. Jalen Rayner in three games already has 11. Okay. And so, that just being said, now, yes, it was against UMass. I still think it should be bragged about because six touchdowns in a game is tremendous, Tristan. It's just Favorite absolutely word. tremendous. And for the fact that he already has 11 touchdowns compared to James Blackman's 17, I think something special is brewing. But you know what? We'll see this Saturday against Troy. And James, what do you have to say to Tristan? Well, I kind of <laughs> – <laughs> I get where he's coming from in a way because I'm, a, I'm also a realistic guy. I am on the Rainer train, but at the same time, this is a test. We're facing the Sun Belt champion in Troy. We're going to see what he's made of, but I do believe in him. I believe he will show this Red Wolves fan base that he is the next quarterback for the A-State Red Wolves, and he is going to lead us to a bowl game this season. Well, James, again, I thank you for your deep analysis. And real quick, before we go to break, I do want to bring something up that we are actually working with the design shop on a little homecoming deal that's in the works. But for five fun days, you can support a local business from October 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th on the Arkansas State campus. You can follow us on our socials and the design shop on Facebook and Instagram to know about this giveaway and the clues that you could win some gift cards to shops around here like Academy, even some food. But guys, stick around for that because when we come back, we're going to talk about the new women's basketball jerseys and we're going to talk about a little bit more about this women's basketball team. Just previewing, yes. not going into too much. When we come back, we'll have all that right here on the Red Bull Frown Table. At Arkansas State, we want you to go. Go where learning soars, takes flight, and rockets ahead. Go for experiences, internships, and scholarships. We want you to go. Become A State Maine. Are you ready to go? Go.astate.edu for details.
Welcome back to Red Wolf Roundtable here on Asian TV. And guys, real quick, before we go into this women's basketball news, I do want to kind of recap what I said before we go went to break about our working with the design shop. For five fun days here on the Arkansas State campus, you could support the local business that is the design shop. From October 16th through the 20th, right here on the Arkansas State campus, you can participate in a sort of, how would you say, scavenger yes. hunt to find some really cool prizes. Free. Free. Free, free charge. prizes. Everybody loves free things. Um, and you can kind of, you know, be in, more involved on this Arkansas State campus because that's the one thing that we've been missing so far that we've been here is the involvement of the student body. So like I said, from October 16th to 20th, right here on the Arkansas State campus, if you follow the, our, our Red Wolf Roundtable Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, you will be able to see some of the clues and where stuff is. And once you find it, you know, I'm sure you're going to have a really good prize in there that you're not going to want to give away to your friend, your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, or your fish or your goldfish. But the thing is, is you got to make sure, again, you're following us on the on our socials. You're following the design shop on their socials. And Cooper, you know, this is a really fun, fun, fun event that the student body can use to get back involved on campus. Yes, and the design shop, their socials, on Facebook, just look up Design Shop with the E and Shop, S H O P P E, I'm pretty yes. sure. Yes, Design Shop. Look that up on Facebook. You can find more information. And if any businesses want to reach out to them, come on. We're college students. We like free stuff. I mean, free food, a free shirt, might as well. Right. Because we're poor. <laughs> <laughs> we're poor. Yeah. Dummy. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, is, and this is kind of going to be the last thing before we talk about the new women's basketball jerseys. Oh, I spoiled it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh. Um, the thing is, is again, from October 16th to 20th, we will be doing this scavenger hunt. I mean, yeah, you, you see us talk about sports all the time, but now we want to get more involved with you guys, the student body, and kind of get everybody back to where it used to be back in the heyday of Arkansas State University. So instead of going home for the weekend, Make sure you come out on these dates to find to go on the little scavenger hunt and find these free gift cards and maybe free other things. And then when the 21st, that Saturday, make sure you're in Centennial Bank Stadium for the game against Coastal because, guys, homecoming is one of those events that you just have to be there for. You have to be loud. You have to be rambunctious. You have to put effort back into this university that you ever that everybody loves being at. But Cooper, yes. enough about the scavenger hunt. Now it's time to talk about the women's basketball jerseys. Women's basketball, the women's basketball team had their media day yesterday. Now yes, while we don't have pictures to show, we go to are our gonna, Twitter. Go to our Twitter. Yes. Go to our Twitter, Red Wolf Roundtable uh, underscore ASU TV, I do believe. I'm just rambling off the top of my head. You'll be able to see Izzy Higginbottom, Winter Rogers, uh, Anna Griffin and all the all the ladies on wearing the new black uniforms. Now, that's not the only new uniform that I noticed. They mm -hmm. actually have a new white uniform, so okay. it looks like it's kind of a brand, whole rebrand on the uniform side for the women's basketball team. Cooper and James, I'm going to get to you in a second. Just looking at the black uni uniforms off rip, what did you think about them? Oh, I thought they were clean. Uh, what are the new hip kits saying? Dope or something? You know, but I thought the jerseys were a good fit. And people don't realize how much getting newer equipment, new jerseys helps with recruiting. I mean, take a look at Oregon. Mm -hmm. As a kid in these days, as a high schooler, you look at it, you look good, you play good, you feel good. So getting these new jerseys, while yes, it costs money, but the team likes it and it helps with recruiting. So I'm all in for new jerseys. I love new gear. James, what about you? Did you like the jerseys? Did you not like the jerseys? What'd you, what was your kind of overall thoughts on them? First, I just want to go back to Coop talking about Oregon. They make my head hurt every time I watch them with their jerseys and their, and on their court. So <laughs> I just want to point that out first. But the next um, thing with the jerseys, I like them. They really give a new feel like it makes you appreciate what they wear, I guess, in a way. So it makes this, sorry, I'm trying to get my words together. <laughs> you're good, you're good. <laughs> um, it makes you appreciate women's basketball much more is what I'm trying to say. And it, they really look good. And I'm excited to see them wear them and play in them, so. Well, James, again, 
Thank you for your analysis. So, Cooper, you know, going back to women's basketball just a tad bit, not going to go too much because it's still early. Looking at the new transfer, Bree Sutton from ULM. Yes. Do you see her becoming a number one scoring option alongside Izzy Higginbottom? I mean, it's going to be really close because you're looking at it. Bree Sutton, she only averaged 8.8 .8 points per game and 3.8 um, assists per game. But look at that consistency. 63.2% from the field goal. She is a very consistent scorer, so she will be taking smart shots. Now, I don't think she will overtake Izzy because, I mean, 16 points per game, it's going to be hard to beat. But I feel like Izzy's points may drop a little bit, but we'll see her numbers and assists rise having Bree Sutton on our team because if you're shooting 63% from the field goal, you're taking smart shots, you're taking the good shots, you're taking your open looks. So adding that could really help this team out. Well, yeah, Cooper, and even if it's the instance of where Bree maybe comes off the bench mm -hmm. and plays that ignition role where she comes in, she takes, this, yeah, she takes the smart shots, kind of like Jade Upshaw should have done last year. But we've already talked about that enough. But just kind of looking at it on the hindsight of things real quick, you know, this is – this has the instances to be a very fun year for yes, women's basketball. Does. You know, we have Melanie Kapinga back. We have Izzy Higginbottom, Anna Griffin, uh, Bree Sutton. We have a, even Lauren Pendleton. I, that's the one name I always forget. Lauren, better, she's I, in I, our I'm class. Sorry. She will crucify you. I'm sorry, Lauren. She's she going to get me. She's going to get me. Lauren's my buddy. But the thing is, is there's a lot of dogs on this team, and there's a lot of scores. So the thing becomes is who's going to become number one. And I'm sure we'll have that more later. But, Cooper, just looking looking back to UMass real quick. 50-burger. 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 Mm. James, 50-burger. 50-burger. Mm. 50-burger. <laughs> 50-burger. Yes. But, okay, so 50-burger, that's kind of one of the first times we've seen that here at Arkansas State when it's actually in a win. You know, we saw it our freshman year when they were able to go against Memphis here and they lost 55-50. Mm. But, Cooper, what do you think about the 50-burger? I'm just so happy we're on the winning side of the 50 burger because last year, not not last year, the year Memphis at home freshman year for 21. us. 21. Yep. 55 to 50. When you score 50 points, you want to be winning. You want to win that game. You don't want to give up 55 points. So it was good to just see at the end of the day, the offense was clicking all game long and 50 burger, baby. 50 burger. I mean, you're seeing some of the highlights now from UMass. It really seems like for the first time in a long time that not only Jalen Rayner, but the rest of the team is really kind of blending together. I mean, you're going to see some UMass highlights in here too. We're not going to show just favoritism. We're going to be equal. Um, but and that's one thing I want to talk about real quick. I'm glad I've seen that. But the run defense has got to be fixed. If yes. we want to beat Troy, which we'll get into later, that's got to be fixed. That's a very must-need stop stopping point is that run defense. And our tackling has just got, just got to improve. Yes, we won by a large amount of points. But you can't beat Troy and not being able to tackle the man in the open field. But my thing is, is it's going to be very interesting now that we are a high-scoring high offense to see our ability to throw the ball down the field. Yes. I mean, Jalen Rayner, he's proven it. We saw a play where he faked the handoff real well, acted like he was going to run, and then he stepped up, threw it for a great touchdown. But we need better protection, and it's coming. He only had one sack last game, so that is great. Yes, we're playing UMass, but it seems the past couple games, our blocking really hasn't been there on the old line, but I feel like now they have a quarterback, they have true QB1, Jalen saying, you know guys, if y'all can protect me, we can win games. Yeah, Cooper, I mean, you know, and we're gonna take another step away. When we come back, guys, we're gonna be talking about some conference standings and we're gonna preview the game against Troy. So stick around, guys, we'll be right back after this. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today.
And welcome back to Red Wolf Roundtable here on ASU TV. And Tristan, it's time to take a look at the conference. You know, we now have an east and a west in the Sun Belt. So let's go ahead and take a how a state side's doing, the western side of the conference. And we're in second. I never thought I'd see the day Arkansas State was in second. But you're seeing it and you're like, okay, guys, it's 1-0, 1-0, 1-1, 0-1, and so on and so forth. Why are you guys getting excited? Well, the reason why we're getting excited is because for the first time in a long time, Arkansas State is within the top five of the conference. Yes. And usually we're at number seven. Yeah, I mean, for the past, like, uh, we're at number six. ULM takes that number seven spot. You know, little brother always below <laughs> us. But oh, I can't wait for ULM game. But we're in second place, and Texas State is on our schedule. And honestly, our side, the west side of the schedule, is pretty bad. The west side of the conference is pretty bad. That being said, we need to take advantage of that because looking at the east, they got some powerhouse dogs. I mean, James Madison, we have a little asterisk because no matter what they do, they can't go to the conference championship game. Right, and so if if season ends today, and this would be the final standings, it would be Marshall playing of the winner of the West. So again, if it would end today, it would be Marshall versus Texas State. But the thing is, is we still got a lot of football to play, ladies and gentlemen. And James Madison, no matter what they do, they can run the table, they can win the win out. And they would only be helping Arkansas State in a way, if you think about it, because the more they beat down on other schools, the less the easy pickings Arkansas State has when they play them down, down the line in the schedule. Now, the thing that I want to bring up is, and it's, it's crazy possibility, but any possibility is true in the Sun Belt Conference, a.k.a. the Fun Belt, is if Marshall ends up being number two, where they would go on to what play in the Sun Belt Conference on the east, representing the east side, and Arkansas State ends up being the one seed, on the west side, Arkansas State would play Marshall, and you're thinking, okay, okay, dummy, what's what's so crazy? Yeah. yeah, thank you. What's so crazy about that? And what's crazy about it is, is the last game of the season, Arkansas State would travel to Marshall to play them on the road. So what I'm getting at is, is we could go down the last game of the season, beat Marshall at home, beat Marshall on the road, and then have to turn right back around and have to play them again in Marsh at Marshall because of the way the Sun Belt is made up. Or hopefully, we can just win out and have the Sun Belt Conference Championship game right here in J Vegas. That that would be fun. That, that would, be, would fun. be fun. And hopefully, I don't know, playing Marshall at the end of the year and looking at the schedule now, it really honestly sucks because <laughs> they're a good football team. And honestly, besides James Madison, that's the one team I'm afraid to play. Marshall, really? I mean, yeah, because if you're looking at the rest of our schedule, Coastal's 0-2 in conference play. Okay. They're, they've fallen off. App State's fallen off. And I feel like the Georgia teams, they're hit or miss. They're either playing good or they're bad. Like Georgia Southern, they're 1-0. Georgia State, they're 1-1. I'm really not too afraid of those two teams. And App State, honestly, they've fallen off. Okay. That, that's that's some strong predictions there. Now you're seeing it, and you're thinking, okay, guys, you got two games coming up, versus three and versus four. Uh, Louisiana, they have beaten us what the past two years? Mm -hmm. Past two, maybe past three years. In Troy, you know, we all saw last season they came down here and kept it close till the fourth quarter, and then they were just like, okay, we're done playing with you, yep. and they ended up scoring like a what what forty something in the yeah, fourth quarter. Yeah, it was close, and then next thing you know, they're up by fifty. Yeah, hashtag A-State way, baby. Yes. But, you know, just looking at it, and I want to talk about this before we get into the Troy preview, is do you think Arkansas State truly has what it takes to run the table and win the conference? Now, I'm not saying they can't. I'm not saying they're just terrible and they can't. So don't don't get mad at me for being a Debbie Downer. But I genuinely want the answer to the question, do you truly think Arkansas State – has what it takes in the year three of Butch Jones, the magic, the magical year three, has what it takes to hang in with some of the other Sunbelt teams. I honestly think they do, but it all starts this weekend against Troy. But one thing I have to say is, with how bad the West is turning out to be right now, Arkansas State can afford 
maybe a loss here and there. We can afford maybe one or two conference losses and still make the Sun Belt Championship game. Now, if A-State wants to host it, they're going to have to win out. But I feel like there is a path that A-State could somehow sneak into the Sun Belt Conference Championship game. But a question I want to bring up real quick, do you see at least three or two? more wins to get us bowling. Oh, easily. Okay. Easily. I okay. mean, we've talked about it, but we've talked about it off camera kind of, you know, just, you know, planning and prepping yeah. and doing stuff like that. There's three games easily that Arkansas State can win and I have the rest of the schedule written down right here in my notebook. Sorry if it was loud. But, you know, we have Troy, which, you know, toss up. Toss up, but Coastal Carolina, that's a win. Yes. We already know that. We we talked about that. ULM win. ULL Again, that's another game that can go either way. So, again, if we win that, that's three right there. And then we would still have USA, Texas State, and Marshall to play. And we could e easily get three more wins and end up with, what, nine wins? Mm -hmm. But here's my thing, okay? And this is kind of creepy and kind of eerie to think it's October. So, you know, you got to get in that Halloween spirit somehow. Year three of Butch Jones. Mm -hmm. We have talked on this show Thousands of thousands of times, not literally, it's it's a it's a you know joke. Don't yes. take it too seriously. But we have talked on this show a lot about Butch Jones and how he sucks and how we think he's gonna get fired. Mm -hmm. Here we are, year three, where Butch Jones is known to do good at all his other schools, and we're currently talking about Arkansas State going to the Sun Belt Conference. And instead of not having hope, we're talking about Arkansas State finding a path to host the Sun Belt Conference Championship. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go back Two or three weeks after the Oklahoma game, that first show after the Oklahoma game. Oh, it was – we were throwing the season away. <laughs> we were throwing it away. We were lighting it with – we were putting gasoline on it, lighting it on fire, and throwing it out. But now that the magical year three has come into fruition, we are talking about Arkansas State hosting a Sun Belt Conference championship. Now, Cooper, is it conspiracy or is it just one of those things that it's a coincidence when it comes to year three? I think – the saying, third time's the charm, a three-leaf clover. There's something good about number three. And so hopefully that luck can rub off like you rub the nose in the union. Maybe? I don't know. It, it is the spooky time of the season. It might be a twilight zone effect. Who knows? But right now, we're all on the train for the Sun Belt. Well, Cooper, I do want to point out one thing, and it's a four-leaf clover, not a three-leaf clover. But I get your I, point. I get your I point. I changed it up for that. I get your point. And, of course, you know, number three is a very historical number. That's what I was getting to. Very historical number, very good luck number for some people who believe in the superstitions. But they, the magical thing between behind Butch Jones is, and, and this is going to probably ruffle some fe feathers between the Ar Arkansas State fan base that watched this show, because all of them are, are still calling for Butch Jones' head. They're mm -hmm. calling for Butch Jones' job. They're calling for Keith Heckendorf's job. They're calling for a lot of jobs. But here's the thing. Ever since we have mentioned that Butch Jones possibly is on the hot seat, he has gone 3-0. And this doesn't go into the whole thing with James rubbing his bald head, and that's kind of our good luck, John. That's completely beside the point. What I kind of think is interesting is how Butch Jones, in that press conference after the Oklahoma game, we were all very, very upset that we just lost to that, to that Oklahoma team by that margin. Now, granted, Oklahoma has a good team this year. Not saying that. But Butch Jones was on record saying – and that press conference that Tuesday afterwards, and I'm kind of jumping around all the timeline here, is that when he was at Central Michigan, they lost to Clemson, and they ended up going to a bowl game. Now, Cooper has been on record on the show saying, well, that team had J.J. Watt and Antonio Brown, so what's your point? Mm -hmm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have Jalen Rayner and Jeff Foreman. Yes. And, yes, we don't have a big defensive star like, J like a J.J. Watt, but, you know, Ethan Hassler's fixed to come off injury. Sammy Johnson's doing well. Justin Parks is doing tremendously better. And, you know, and even Tim Hardiman is doing very well in the defensive line, too, which shout out, Tim. we got to get you on the show sometime, brother. And speaking of that, fans kind of, you know me, I like to go off script here. But let us know who you want to see on the show. Yes. What, what, what athlete do you want to see on the show? We'll work our magic and try to get them on the show. Um, but real quick before we preview, actually, you know, let's scratch that. Let's go ahead and preview the Troy game real quick. The Troy game, we're going to be playing them on the road. They are the favorite. 17 points. And, you know, it's very evenly matched up in a way. Points per game, yes. Yards allowed, you know, we are allowing up more. We are. We allow more points per game because we drop 70, 
Oklahoma dropped 73 yes. points on our head week one. Yes, and, you know, you're thinking of it and like, eh, you know, Troy's a very, very scary game, very toss-up game. But here's, here's my prediction, okay? If Arkansas State finds a way to beat Troy this Saturday in Troy, Alabama, then for the first time in a long time, Centennial Bank Stadium on October 21st well, won't be sold out. And be filled up. But it'll be probably 85% to capacity. Yes. That is my hot take. For Troy the day. is such a big game because, well, after Troy, we have a bye week. Mm -hmm. We get that lucky bye week yep. to regroup. So if we beat Troy, that's two weeks of the hype of we're 2 and 0 in conference, we're 4 and 2 on the season. Homecoming's coming up next. Coastal's coming into town. I could see that stadium getting loud, getting crazy, because we've seen the hype on Twitter about Jalen Rayner, and everybody in Northeast Arkansas and everywhere else, he's must-watch TV right now. Right. James, I want to kind of get your opinion, too. What do you think about the Troy game? What's kind of your score prediction? You're currently 3-0. and What is your prediction so I can write it down? Well, man, this week I'm going to go, we're going to stay with the high scoring. I'm going to give us a 45 to 35 win okay, okay. on this week. Okay, um, and what do you think about the matchup? What do you like, what you not like? Troy is a big toss-up, as you guys said. Um, we need to get those yards allowed down. Like, we have to get, we have to get it together on the defensive side of the ball as far as running. I really want us to get this game so we can go into 2-0 and and go into a bye week just on top, honestly. So. Now, Cooper, what about you? Score predictions, how are you right. feeling? I'm feeling an A-State win. Okay. But I feel like both offenses, they're going to be struggling. We have a cold front coming in. The temperature's going to drop for the first time. And so maybe they're a little cold. So we might have some cold hands out there, but I got an A-State win and a 27 to 24 shootout little old-fashioned football game. Are you saying maybe a game winner? And maybe a Dominic Zavada little 50-yarder, maybe. Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Okay, okay. Well, here, here's my thing. What's and your I, prediction, Tristan? And, and, and I like your prediction because it was kind of the same thing with me. But instead of going 27-24, okay. I'm going to go 28-21 Arkansas State. All right. And I'm saying, and I'm saying this. We're going to get the ball back, and it's going to be a two-minute drill. Okay. Jalen Rayner is going to show the world that he is good. And, and, again, you go back to what I said earlier, and you're thinking, okay, what do you think? What, why are you saying that? But here's my thing. Jalen Rayner does that. Jalen Rayner does that. I will officially be on his hype train, so I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it down. 28-21, uh, Arkansas State and James. You're, ru you're rubbing the bald head. I like it. Yes. We, that's our good luck charm from now on until something goes wrong. That is our good luck charm. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead, rub it, rub it for me, rub it for me, big dog. There you go. But guys. That was been that has, this has been another exciting episode of Red Wolf Roundtable here in, here on ASU TV. Hopefully, when we come back ahead of the bye week, we can talk about an Arkansas State victory over Troy. But stick around, guys. We'll have more next Tuesday live, 4 p.m. Only on ASU TV. <laughs>